Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Did you enjoy the last episode? For those of you that missed it, I urge you to check it out because I spoke with Ricardo Spagni, aka Fluffy Pony from Monero, which we spoke about the Hack Summit, which is taking place over the next few days. Online attendees of the virtual conference will have the opportunity to engage with high-profile speakers at the Hack Summit, including Jed McCaleb, technical founder of Stellar and Ripple. Of course, we've got Fluffy Pony, technical leader of Monero, Dawn Song, co-founder and CEO of Oasis Labs, and co-founding scientist of Zcash, and so many more. And I do have a code for the Hack Summit virtual conference where each and every one of you will be able to get your hands on free tickets. And I'll reveal that at the end of the show. But today, I wanted to grab a few minutes with David Schneider, and he's the CEO of DecoNet. His goal is to make engaging with the digital knowledge economy faster, cheaper, and easier by enabling creators to capture more of the value that they create. David has a lot of valuable insights on new kinds of economic actors called Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, DAOs. Basically, communities of distributed actors, workers, who bring a new form of labor and value to the market. Very similar to what we see in hackathons. This is forming the discourse around the second wave of the future of work. First, it was flexible working and side gigging. Now that looks much more like empowered individuals coming together in their own groups to create and unlock economic value. This structure could very well change and disrupt the current idea of a company or an organisation and transform that into something a lot more fluid and distributed thanks to new tech like Deconet. I'm quite excited about this one and how he's using technology to create an alternative future of work. And as a content creator... Maybe you shouldn't be too surprised by why I'm excited. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to San Francisco so we can speak with David Schneider, CEO of DecoNet. So a massive warm welcome to the show, David. Can you tell the listeners a little about your position at DecoNet as well as the broader blockchain space? Hey, Neil. Uh, thank you for having me. So pleased to be talking with you today. I'm the CEO over at DecoNet. We are building a commerce portal for coders and aim on decentralizing the the entire knowledge economy. And I'm sure we'll get into some of that. And what that means for the blockchain space at large is that we think that we've settled on what is going to be one of the core most important use cases of this technology over the next few uh, over the next few decades. So Deconet is hosting a huge hackathon for the up-and-coming virtual blockchain conference, Hack Summit. And we will have people listening that are passionate about coding, the world of crypto, and equally a few that are a little bit unsure and just want to learn more about it, but are too afraid to ask. So can you set the scene and tell me what the hackathon is, what it's all about, and what the participants can expect? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have we, we partnered up with a group called HackVC to host a, a conference and hackathon called Hack Summit. The hackathon is taking place over July 6th, 7th, and 8th. And then the conference is taking place July 9th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, the hackathon is a virtual contest with over $100,000 in crypto prizes with a grand prize of nearly $50,000 with sponsors like uh, Consensus, WanChain, BlueZell, Elastos, and that's taking place right now with a lot of teams actively building, possibly staying up all night to do so. And then following the, uh, following the hackathon is this virtual conference Hack Summit, which has some pretty great names like uh, Jed from Stellar will be speaking, a Fluffy Pony from Monero, and a number of other prominent folks in the, in the industry. And so that's a, that's a virtual conference. And both the conference as well as the hackathon are 100% for charity, 100% virtual. Anybody can join in at, at hacksummit.org. So I believe by the time this airs, uh, we will be in the last day of the hackathon, and then the conference will be starting on the following day. Fantastic. Now, there is a huge debate at the moment about how blockchain and crypto will impact our daily lives and indeed businesses. But what do you anticipate these impacts will be and what skills do you think will pave the way? 
Yeah, so I think the best way for me to answer that is to just give a, li- a little bit more information on, w- on what we're doing because, you know, our, our intention is to absolutely be a, a big part of what that looks like in terms of the future way that people work and, and interact. Yeah. So just for a little bit of, of detail on that to set the context, what we are building is infrastructure for people to buy and sell digital assets as well as do projects digitally. So that means like do contract development work and do things like uh, participate in contests where the blockchain acts as the settlement layer. And then rather than just making something for like the existing freelancer economy or the existing gig economy, what we're doing is we're building the primitives or the protocols for people to bind together and create new types of entities, new types of teams. So let's say you and me and two other people are working on some project and we're creating some digital asset. In this case, let's say it's a software product. We're creating an application. In the old paradigm, we see one individual got paid and then they paid all the other folks on their team a salary based on some prior agreed upon rate. Our mission in building this solution is how do we shift that paradigm away from people who work remotely over the internet being paid a salary to one where they can start being earning like essentially building wealth by earning passive and sustained income as the assets that they create provide utility for people in the world. And to give you an example from a parallel industry, uh, what we're seeing is this is happening in media, right? So YouTubers with, with the YouTube platform are able to create the asset, the YouTube video, and then receive royalties from it as it's viewed in perpetuity. So for us, this redefining of the notion of work, the notion of wealth, the notion of, of ownership, I believe is going to be the, the most impactful uh, the most impactful like piece of societal infrastructure that, that that is being built. And that's what we're working on at DecoNet. And then in terms of the skills that uh, need to be involved, obviously in this paradigm of decentralization, there's some new rules, there's new tools, there's this notion of like private key management, for example. So in the same way that other technologies taught us things like AOL forced us, so to speak, to learn about what instant messaging is. Blockchain is going to teach us how to do things like manage private keys or what it means to trust a custodian. And in that uh, learning, there's some certain kind of like technical challenges around interacting with a decentralized environment. So really my view and the view of our, our company at large is that the first major early adopters, and this may be even for the next three to five or 10 years is going to be uh, technical professions, technical people, And then over time, just like we saw with the internet, where it initially started out for like, you know, nerds, so to speak, then it slowly started to bleed into everyday life. And now it touches everything that we interact with. Uh, We expect the same trend to follow with this technology of decentralization and this technology of of self-sovereignty. It's incredibly exciting times. I completely agree with you that that redefining of everything is incredibly exciting too. And that's something I want to dig a little bit deeper with you in a few moments. But before we do, I mean, back to the hackathon for a moment. What are some of the projects people can work on during that hackathon to put their skills to test? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of these partners that we're working with, um, some of them have, have public chains. Some of them have specific protocols. So a lot of them are pretty broad and, and open. Really, what's been so interesting is that these projects that we're working with want to incentivize the whole community at large to really get a sense of what is the limits of some people's creativity. So there's definitely some projects around tooling, but also a lot of projects around dApp or decentralized application creation on various um, smart contract enabled public chains. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been really great to kind of see how open everything is. And given that uh, the hackathon just started oh, about six hours ago uh, right now, there's been, there's been a rush of, of people who are creating things. But I think over the next 48, 72 hours, we're going to see, we're going to really see some of these results emerge. But yeah, it's been, it's been really cool to see these sponsors being so open to what the creativity of the blockchain community at large is, opposed to kind of uh, defining these challenges inside a really narrow scope. Yeah, it's great to see the blockchain community and indeed the global community coming together on something like this and sharing those ideas. But in your opinion, what is the importance of events like Hack Summit? 
it's twofold. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, the, the big piece of this is around education. There's people in the space like myself who, you know, not only believe that what the types of things that we're building can provide like utility, utility value in a true kind of startup point of view where it's like you have a problem and I am solving that problem and therefore I'm a net benefit to society. That is still absolutely true. But there's kind of a broader macro shift that is the attitude of blockchain. We're seeing it, you know, of course, with, with Bitcoin and a lot of privacy coins where um, just people are retaining a higher level of, of sovereignty and control over their own wealth. So e even the notion of portable money, right? If you think about Bitcoin and somebody lives in a country where there may be some kind of uh, despot or dictator moving in, in a, in, a, in a centralized world where their money is tied up in all of their physical assets that they can't move, if there's trouble where they're living, they are kind of stuck where they are unless they want to move to a new country and be totally destitute. But if their money is totally virtual and totally in their own control and totally portable, they can move to a new place and flourish as they were in the old place, um, you know, but away from uh, being under the, the rule or thumb of some, some, some dictator, for example. So, you know, these are the kind of big macro trends and the, the, the really interesting things that are really prevalent in this space. So making sure people are really educated and building and continuing to think on the underlying infrastructure that creates this kind of world is extremely important. Because as, as you know, whether it's open source or blockchain based or not, our world, our modern software based world runs on digital infrastructure. And in the same way that our physical infrastructure, like roads and bridges, need to be uh, uh, upkept, and they, you know, in that case, it happens with like construction companies and taxes, our digital infrastructure needs that same kind of upkeep as well. And because it's done in an open, distributed way, the more people who are, can contribute to this, can collaborate this, and both collaborate and get paid on this, which is a big focus for us too, is really aligning the incentives there, is, is vital to building that better world that uh, a lot of us see, my, myself included. That's, that's what motivates me every day. Now, Deconet is a platform that's being used for far more than just hackathons, though, and you describe it as a commerce portal for coding and a marketplace for software and development. And marketplaces often give rise to new ways of working, for example, side gigging. So how do you see that trend evolving, and what do you think that means, and how people can benefit from it? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, it's really interesting, I think, here, because... What, we, what we've seen with the rise of kind of the freelancer and the gig economy is that the freelancer and the gig economy has given rise to this, this really amazing movement where a single individual is providing value generally in a fully autonomous way. What we're going to see and what we're building the infrastructure for is teams of freelancers to coalesce. And essentially, everyone can act as their own CEO together. So teams of freelancers, teams of gig workers coming together to create things in, in higher levels of abstraction. In other words, to create more product, more complicated products, more complicated uh, and complex services that provide more value. And the reason that they're able to do that now, opposed to before, is that the underlying infrastructure, the underlying economic rails on which those organizations will form will be smart contract based. This is the notion of a DAO or uh, otherwise known as like a distributed collective organization and these distributed collective organizations and we're starting to see examples of them emerge and we'll continue to see more as more tooling is built out for them but as these distributed collective organizations emerge the way that all of the parties are going to be paid is through a smart contract and when you try and people have been trying for almost a decade now to do this with fiat currency. There's this whole notion of the platform co-op. There's some amazing, amazing work being done in that space. But now that we have programmable money, it really unlocks a whole new world of possibility in actually bringing those things to reality. Now, for a lot of people listening, when they think of an online marketplace and gig economy platforms, they're immediately going to think of things like TaskRabbit or Etsy. That's what's going to spring to mind. So is Deconet similar to that? Or, or should I say it's actually took it to another level, hasn't it, by bringing everybody together rather than just that one person, one gig kind of thing? Yeah. So initially our focus is on people who are creating digital assets. So if you think about things like TaskRabbit and Etsy, we don't really see ourselves going head to head with those folks just because so much of that 
is, is physical work, whether it's selling a physical good or doing physical work, but really the focus on the digital knowledge economy, on coders and product people and people who are doing machine learning and uh, social media marketing is, is really the initial focus because all of that is, is verifiable online. You know, if you think about, uh, if we take a step back from this, what we have now is, is digital money and digital currency, programmable digital money. And so it seems to follow that the types of things that you would buy and sell with digital money would be digital goods and services uh, uh, opposed to physical ones. But then what kind of separates us from some of the centralized gig platforms that exist today is one, this peer-to-peer -peer notion, and two, and I, I think this is this is the part that's going to take a number of years, but this is the part that is, is the most uh, societally impactful, is this notion of a new type of ownership and a new way to work, uh, really moving from this salary-based paradigm to things that look a lot more equitable, where creators uh, and contributors are able to capture more of the share of the value that they create, rather than just earning enough based on their geographic region, for example. So, you know, and there's, there's some regions on the planet, even if you're the best developer in the world, the salary that you're going to take home is really less dependent on your skills and more dependent on the market where you're at and basically where you're sitting geographically. But in a world that looks a lot more meritocratic, where you're paid based on your contributions, all of a sudden, your ability to both bring in a lot more value for yourself and your family economically rises, as well as, and, and this is one I find really exciting, as well as the drive to have, like, let's say you live in a, a rural area, the drive of having to move to a, a centralized city to uh, generate a higher level of income starts to crumble away a little bit. And in that, that is hopefully what we'll see, and this is this would be a really nice second order effect of, of the solution that we're building, is that the smartest, most talented people who are distributed in uh, you know rural and suburban areas across the country actually get to stay where they're at and build wealth and keep knowledge and, and wisdom in the place where they're at, rather than having all of those aggregate to the major metropolitan areas of the world. Now, I do think it's easy to think of crypto as just digital cash or a new way to transact. But like you said at the very beginning of the show, education plays a big part in what we're doing here. So for anyone listening that is a little bit confused, what does it mean when people talk about Web 3.0 and decentralized autonomous organizations? What excites you about the future of blockchain and crypto when it comes to changing the way we look at life, business and work? There's, there's some people who might not be familiar. I just want to like do a quick definition sure. and then what we can talk a little bit about some of the second order implications. So basically what we've got with a blockchain is a series of nodes um, and you can think about them like imagine you're in a room and everybody has a spreadsheet on their computer and they see you hand me one dollar. And everybody marks on their computer on their spreadsheet, Neil handed David $1. Now, if you and I forget about the transaction or we don't trust each other, we can just go look at everybody's computer in the room and they all say, oh, Neil handed David $1. That must be the case. There's consensus amongst the nodes. And so now what a smart contract is, is basically just deploying a, a function to those nodes. You, you pay some money and then now each of those nodes you can send money to it and without a human being interacting like code in a code based way that money can then be sent to another party or split or held or do all, or be used in voting or all kinds of things really just unbounded things and so that's the notion of a smart contract and then again it's the same it's the same kind of thing you broadcast the transaction to the network and you know depending on the network either very quickly or a little bit more slowly that transaction uh, is confirmed by all of the nodes. In this case, you know, in our in our analogy, all of these uh, spreadsheets um, that are saying where the transfer of money is happening, and so that that in essence is a nice way to I would say to to kind of visualize what a blockchain is, where the parties don't have to necessarily trust each other. That um, you know, you've handed me a dollar, so to speak, and so some of the some of the implications that we're expecting to see for that is for us, we, you know, we, we, we definitely see, and I think this is one of the interesting things about the blockchain space, especially as you see, you know, prices rise up and down on, uh, because everything is, is liquid. But, you know, th that is one of the implications is that we're going to see a lot more things that uh, have been traditionally illiquid become liquid via tokenization. 
And then the other thing is this notion of this new kind of ownership. So people retaining a higher level of sovereignty over the work that they're doing in the context of the future of work, so to speak, you know, having everybody kind of feel like they're working for for themselves, having the ability for organizations and, and platforms to come together that feel more worker owned. And a lot of these things aren't necessarily new ideas. Like if you think about public supermarket, which is a supermarket in the southeast of the United States, that's a, an employee stock owned company. But there's a lot it, it, they, they do amazing work, all, all this type of thing. It functions really well. They have high level of customer service. But there's a lot of scaffolding that they've had to build internally to make that work. Now, if that looks like an organization of that size that's a lot more decentralized, where people can really kind of come and go with their value as they please and contribute value and earn value as they please, that becomes really interesting uh, as well. And now to bring that down to something that's slightly more specific, I think another thing that w we're starting to see, and there's examples already like, like Steemit um, is uh, – essentially like a tokenized version of Reddit for upvoting content, is we're starting to see the emergence of a new kind of, of application. And the way that I like to describe it, and I borrowed a phrase from, from Kevin Kelly of, uh, of Wired and Long Now to call it better than free. So right now, if you think about like mobile apps, for example, we have paid apps and we, where you, know, you pay a dollar to, to download the app, or we have, you know, in air quotes, free apps where you are sent a bunch of advertisements and essentially become, you know, have your data brokered on the back end in order to use these services for free. But this new category is this notion of, of better than free, whereby people who are contributing to the network are able to take home some kind of fungible value. And of course, this already exists in a centralized way. If you think about Wikipedia, if you if you contribute and edit Wikipedia, um, you're taking home value, you're contributing to the knowledge of the world, you're creating this amazing resource for people to learn and grow. Um, but the value that you take home is non-fungible. It, it's non-tradable. It's only for you. The notion of this better than free type of application is that the val when you provide value to the network or to the app or to the platform, that the value ta you take home, you then can use that to buy food with or buy a TV or whatever it might be because it is this totally liquid virtual currency. So yeah, look, there's a couple examples of those. We're an example of one of those. So that's that's kind of another, I think, near-term implication. Excellent. Equally, I suppose there will be some people listening as well that are going to be new to the concept of new form of labour forces, such as distributed co-ops or individual actors. So what are the simplest ways that they can use and benefit from this structure? And equally, how can they leverage the power of emerging workforces or economic actors like decentralised autonomous organisations? Yeah, so the, this, this whole notion is really just in its infancy. Um, a lot of the governance platforms around them are just getting started. You know, we're at the MVP stage, and we're really hyper focused on on people who are who are software developers. So if people are are developing software or designers that are uh, product managers, like starting at DecoNet would be a really good way to see what it's like to participate and and build code as part of a decentralized a decentralized cooperative organization that's producing software. Uh, we also saw, you know, the DAO with Ethereum, which was a decentralized in investment entity um, that had kind of obviously some technical issues associated with it. But it's it's pretty early on that, frankly. If somebody finds these ideas really captivating uh, but doesn't necessarily have a technical background, there's not really a huge place for them to start participating in a decentralized autonomous organization as of today. So is there anything else that you can share with listeners about the virtual conference or what the future has in store for you guys at Deconet? Yeah, so I'll, I'll touch on both of those things. On the Hack Summit, um, again, I'll just mention the, the dates of everything. The Hackathon is July 6th through 8th, and then the conference is the uh, 9th, 10th, and 11th. And again, it's an all for charity event, three days, some amazing content. So if any of the things that I discussed specifically around like the more generalized implications of blockchain or, it, you know, if this conversation wasn't technical enough for you, the Hacksima conference would be a really excellent thing to, to dive into. There's going to be some some stellar content. And I believe it's the we're both the, the largest blockchain hackathon of all time, as well as the uh, largest blockchain conference of all time, which is a pretty exciting accolade. And then on the um, on the DecoNet side, we 
you know, we're, we're kind of a lean and mean team, a little less than 10 employees at this point, but a really talented group. And starting on the 16th of July, uh, we have some kind of news around an offering that we'll give to our community. I'll leave it a little bit shrouded in mystery, but if people go to our website, which is deco.network, um, there's, there's some information on, on it there. Oh, I do love a bit of shrouded in mystery and a bit of a teaser there. <laughs> well, huge thanks for coming on today. I think you're going to have got a lot of people very curious. So before I do let you go, could I just ask that you remind the listeners of the web URL for Hackathon? Uh, I think you've just given it for DecoNet and also how they can follow you on Twitter as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Hack Summit is at hacksummit.org. DecoNet is at deco.network, D-E-C-O dot network. Uh, and personally on Twitter, I'm at Dave Snyder, D-A-V-E-S-N-E-I-D-E-R. And you'll see the DecoNet Twitter linked in my profile, which is at Deco, D-E-C-O underscore network. And both of those are pretty active. Twitter, Twitter is where the crypto conversation lives. Other than your podcast, of course. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I love what you guys are doing. I love how you're forming the discourse around that second wave of the future of work. I mean, first it was flexible working, then side gigging. Now what you're doing here, it looks like it's going to be much more about empowered individuals coming together in groups to create and unlock economic value, which is fantastic. It really is. So a big thank you for coming on today. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, pleasure to speak with you. I love David's vision and his passion for decentralised autonomous organisations, DAOs, and that vision of the future of work. The second wave of the future of work is also intriguing. Like I said at the beginning of the show, first it was flexible working, side gigging. Now this is evolving and enabling empowered individuals to come together in groups to create and unlock their own economic value. This structure could very well change and disrupt the current idea of company organisation and change it into something a lot more fluid and distributed, thanks to this new tech like Deconet. Consider my mind blown and inspired in equal measure. So a big thank you to David for coming on the show today. But if you do want to surround yourself with more diverse thought like that, please remember, tune into the Hack Summit where you're going to have the opportunity to engage directly with high-profile speakers such as Jed McCaleb from Stella and Fluffy Pony at Monero and so many others. And if that doesn't make you curious about wanting to find out more information about the Hack Summit and this transformational change, nothing will. But I'm not giving up on you just yet. Like I said at the beginning of the show, I've negotiated a free code for the Hack Summit virtual conference for everybody listening to this show. All you need to do is head over to www.hacksummit.org, register, and then add the code Fluffy Pony. I'll add it to the show notes too. But more than anything, I want you to tune in and let me know what you think and what you took away from the event by tweeting me at Neil C. Hughes or emailing me directly at techblogwriter at outlook.com. But I'm afraid we're out of time once again. We've reached the end of another episode. So all that's left for me to say is work hard, stay humble. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.